Well, good evening, State Line Baptist Church. Welcome to our Wednesday, our midweek Bible study prayer service. We're going to be wrapping up our final uh, 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 final installment of our Doctrine of Salvation uh, tonight. Looking forward to that. Um, uh, but uh, I tell you, I um, I'm looking forward. I know I say this every week, but uh, man, I'll tell you right now, I cannot wait to get back. Because I tell you, I love Sunday. I love Sunday evening, Sunday morning, Sunday school. Uh, but I'll tell you, that midweek just jump start to get you through the week is something I just, I really miss. I, uh, uh, I, and I'll tell you, I miss those, seeing those bus kids running out of the church. I, the, the excitement on their faces, they come rushing in, uh, especially with our, our new uh, 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 rally time where they come into the church and they're all excited. And uh, I've got to, uh, got to know the kids because now we bring them to the sanctuary and, uh, you know, shaking their hands and they come up hugging and stuff. And uh, uh, I tell you, I was talking to Brother Charlie and he was uh, talking about the bus ministry. And, uh, and it, it's, uh, it, we, you know, we had the issue where the bus ministry went down there a little bit, then it built back up real big and exploded. King's kids started taking off. And now this comes in, and uh, and I was like, and I told Brother Charles, I said, you know, when we do finally get to assemble back in the church house, I was like, you know, it's going to be difficult. We got to build this up. Brother Charles said, you know, we're, we'll do it again. You know, <laughs> but by the way, it, it's not us that builds it; it's God that builds it. And he's really good at that. Uh, but a quick announcement before we go: we got a testimony tonight. I'm going to share with you. But before, uh, Sister Becky uh, Metz had messaged me. Just a little bit ago, and asked if uh, any if she has some bandanas. So anybody in our church needs some bandanas. Uh, face mask. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> face mask. She's got. She said she's got a few of them. Uh, anybody in our church family needs somebody uh, just to message her or message me? Let me know. Uh, of course, now you need them if you're going in to get groceries or whatever. So if anybody ha need, has a need, just let me know. Uh, you know, and, and again, let me, uh, say, let me say this. I know uh, I've talked to a few y'all this week. Some of them are facing. Some of you guys are facing job layoffs. Uh, and obviously, the, the, I think the financial crunch is starting to really bite in. Uh, I see a lot of people um, uh, you know, online you know, really upset about this whole shutdown thing. Uh, a lot of people hurting. Um, state line, if you, if you need something, we're family. We're church family. That's what we do. We reach out to one another. Uh, let me know. Let me know. We'll get the, you know, we'll get the men together and do, do what we can do. Uh, I tell you, I miss you. I love you. Uh, looking forward. I, I tell you, uh, looking forward this weekend. Looking forward to church. Uh, I keep, I've been walking around the house uh, singing soon and very soon. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, I'll tell you. But anyway, enough about uh, Sunday. We have a testimony. Let me get this up here. I'm looking at my computers over there. Uh, Brother Dave Dugan uh, got his testimony. going to share that with you tonight. Uh, he, this is uh, the one he did back during the uh, Christmas play. Uh, I messaged him last night and asked if he would all right, if he, we could use it. He said absolutely. So uh, here's Brother Dave and testimony time. church uh, with my mom and my grandmother and my father. I remember uh, when I was around six years old being down uh, at a beach vacation at my grandfather's place. One night I was restless, had a hard time sleeping. My mom came in uh, to check in on me and I let her know that I was afraid that I was going to die and go to hell and I just uh, couldn't get that out of my mind and she asked me if I wanted to be saved and so I said yes and so she led me in the sinner's prayer to ask Jesus into my heart to save me. To, uh, still live out my childhood having a lot of fun but also <clears throat> knew that there were standards that God had set uh, for Christians to live by and was able to witness to a few friends. I was praying. Amen. I think that was it. I'm not sure. I think it was. My, my sound's not on. I hope I didn't cut Brother Dave off. But anyway, <laughs> we're back. Uh, I, uh, um, I tell you, I uh, uh, 
going into our prayer list. I got I got a bunch of them coming in, so uh, we're gonna just go ahead and do start into that. Um, let me see one, two, three, four, about six, seven prayer requests that, that came in. Number one, first and foremost, I want to share with you guys. Uh, Sister Frances Wag, uh, her her family just messaged me not that long ago. Said she she uh, she's gotten COVID and she's not doing very good and she's in the hospital right now as we speak. So uh, should they give me permission to share uh, share that with you all and have us to be praying for her? So lift her up, pray for her. Um, uh, I uh, I tell you the hard thing about this as a pastor is I want to get in the hospitals. I'm gonna be able to go. Unfortunately, not allowed. I mean, just it's they, they won't let you in. Uh, won't let family in when it comes to that matter as well. But uh, keep her in prayer. Uh, Christine Norris messaged me. She had her MRI done today. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And uh, she, uh, but she's asking for praying for good results so they can finish up doing what they got to do to get the cancer out. Lord, uh, just lift her up, pray for her. Uh, Brother Ralph Stanley, uh, Sister Joan messaged me earlier today. Said that uh, he's um, uh, having some back issues, so pray for him. Uh, let me see. Uh, Caleb uh, asked to keep praying for a friend of his uh, that uh, that she would get saved. He's got, got a close friend that he'd love to see her get saved. Also, his job as well, uh, uh, possibly his whole company going on furlough. So uh, it, it's a, I think he's laid off right now. I believe it's what he said, and it may even go longer. So so um, so pray for him. Uh, let me see. Also, of course, many struggling during this time with this virus and everything, all the craziness going on, the layoffs, uh, uh, the churches struggling. I mean, this has just hit America big time, every aspect of it. Everybody's suffering. Uh, I, I think of the nurses and doctors on the front line. You know, we're going to pray for them as well tonight. Um, pray for Brother Charlie as well. Uh, lift him up for you. Um, every week we've been praying for Brother Charlie for over five years, and we've seen Obviously, God holding the cancer back there. Uh, pray for uh, Zach uh, Chandler messaged me today. Uh, a friend of his that he works with, uh, uh, her, uh, I believe her name's Karen, her, uh, her, her children's husband, or, or father had died of brain cancer, and the family's having a rough time with that, and uh, asked if we were just struggling with, uh, you know, where's God and all this, and, and, uh, and he asked if we would pray for that family as well. So, so seven on the prayer list tonight. So, uh, so now let's go to prayer again. Church family, I ask you, I know if you're watching, uh, please uh, uh, pray with me. Uh, like I said, I, don't just watch me pray. Uh, we're not together tonight, but uh, if uh, we'll lift our prayers up together for uh, before God, before his throne. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening you've given us. Lord, our, our church family's not together tonight, Lord, but our hearts are. And Lord, as we, we come together and we come before your throne, Lord, we have some prayer requests here tonight, Lord. Lord, you promised that that uh, the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And Lord, we're coming together as your church, Lord, here at State Line, and we're lifting these prayer requests that came into us tonight up before your throne that needs your special attention tonight. Lord, Sister Francis Way is not doing good. And Lord, uh, I was sad to hear the news today. And Lord, I pray and ask, Lord, that you would have your hand upon her. Lord, I pray and ask you to give the doctors wisdom. Oh, Lord, that she would uh, uh, beat this thing. Lord, she'd come out of the hospital as soon as possible. Be with her family. Lord, I know they're hurting. And uh, any family, lots of families going through this as well, Lord, that you'd just be with each and every one. Pray for Sister Christine Norris. I lift her up before you. Uh, Lord, she had the MRI done. Lord, I pray and ask that all the results come back good. Lord, that they need to do the next step and whatever they have to do, be able to uh, make sure that she, the cancer is going away from her. Uh, get, uh, it's so good to hear her voice, hear that she's doing good. But Lord, I pray and ask you to keep your hand upon her and heal her in a mighty way. Lord, we know you're the miracle giver, Lord. We've seen it all through scripture. We've seen it in our lives. We've seen the prayer list answered many, many times. And Lord, we ask for a special prayer request for our sister, Christine. Uh, if I lift up my brother Ralph before you, Lord, having some back issues, Lord, I pray and ask that you would heal him as well. Uh, pray for Caleb's friend for salvation, Lord. We lift her up before you. Lord, love to hear a phone call, Lord, that she called on you today and be saved. Lord, I pray for that. Pray for Caleb's job, Lord, that he could get back to work. He don't see no layoffs. Uh, Lord, just pray and ask that uh, everything works out there. Uh, pray for many that are struggling right now, Lord. Many are uh, are struggling financially all around our country. Lord, businesses are hit. Lord, I think of all the small businesses in our areas. Lord, as I rode by and I seen them shut down, Lord, don't even know if they're ever going to open back up. Lord, I pray for them. Lord, I lift up uh, my sister Pam Benjamin. She was just on my heart today, Lord, with the diner. Lord, I know small businesses are struggling. Lord, I pray to bless her as well. Uh, I pray for those that are the families that are just stuck at home and can't go out, Lord. I lift them up before you. Pray for our doctors, our nurses, our first responders, Lord, that are on the front line with all this. Lord, keep them safe. 
Lord, and I just pray and ask you take this virus out of this country. But Lord, I pray and ask, Lord, that we know you did, you're allowed this for a reason. But Lord, help us to learn from it. And Lord, I don't want to get back to normal. Lord, I want to get back to where you want us. And Lord, that's a soul winning, Bible preaching, a uh, 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 people loving church. And Father, I lift up Brother Charlie. I pray and ask, Lord, you keep your hand upon him. What a blessing to hear every week. Just more and more good news, Lord. He did say he had a little spot show up from his last exam, Lord. But, but Lord, he's so confident, Lord. And I know why he's confident, Lord, because you've been so faithful in, in answering his prayers. And, Lord, I just pray and ask you to be with him and Jeannie. Put your arms around them as well. Uh, pray for Zach's friend, Karen, and their family, her family. Lord, just lost a, a, a loved one there, Lord. I pray and ask that you would uh, 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 reveal why, Lord. Help Maybe through this tragedy they could see you. And Father, I pray that in a mighty way. And now, Father, as we dig into your word, Lord, as we tackle this important topic of soul winning, Lord, I pray and ask, I pray, I, I hope my church is watching tonight. Lord, I hope, Lord, that those are watching, Lord, that they would get a burden. Lord, get a hunger to see people saved. Lord, help, I, I pray and ask, Lord, that every Baptist church in this area just get a hunger to go out and tell people about you. Lord, outside the church house and out into the streets and telling people about you. Father, we love you and we thank you. And Lord, I, I pray and ask also, as we go on to our study tonight, Lord, if there's somebody watching by the internet tonight, whether Facebook or YouTube or whatever, Lord, if they're not saved, oh Lord, I pray and ask for a Holy Spirit conviction that tonight they'd call on your name and be saved. Father, we love you and we thank you. Look forward to your return. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All righty, I'm gonna grab, um, grab our Bible study here. And uh, we're going to move on. Uh, Doctrine of Salvation. Let me flip this up. I got our notes right up here. Boom. Got it right there. Um, Doctrine of Salvation. We're going to look at two things. Method uh, of uh, method of soul winning and the basics of soul winning. I've been on this now for what? This is about our fifth week. Uh, and, and State Line, you know me. I, I'm, I'm passionate about soul winning. Uh, I, 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 I'm dying because I can't get out. I mean, you don't necessarily want to knock on somebody's door right now, and I know the Lord's doing something, but boy, I'm telling you, uh, there's a lot of church stuff I'm looking forward to when I get at, when this thing gets done, but man, I can't wait to get back out on the street and tell people about Jesus. Looking forward to getting those teenagers. Uh, guys, uh, 18s, if you're watching, I pray you are. Man, I'm looking forward to getting back at McDonald's and, and, after, and talking about soul winning, getting out on the street. Man, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but, but that's soul winning. It's vital for the local church. Every church member, not just the pastor, not just the youth group, but every person in the local church ought to be reaching people outside of the church door. So we're going to go in tonight. We're going to look at methods of soul winning. So I, I, I've got four basic methods that you can use. Uh, whether you're you're watching tonight, you want to do it, you've got a craving to get out there, but you're nervous as can be, you've never done it, and, and but you want to. Uh, all the way from the beginner, uh, I believe all the way to the one that's been out for a while and they're just looking for a new method maybe to be able to reach people different. I got four methods I, I've basically tried in my 20-some years of going out soul winning that I want to share with you tonight. Uh, I won't be long tonight, I think. I not making a new promise. I'm going to try not to be long. Uh, but hang with me. I'll go as quick as I can. Uh, jump right in. Number one, first, uh, first method of soul winning is reaching your personal Jerusalem. All right? Th basically, this is everybody that God has laid in your path. All right? Uh, it, could be, it could be a family member. Uh, it could be a, a, a co-worker. Um, I, I, I got a fella uh, that messaged me. I'm not going to say his name. He goes to our church. Uh, and the reason I'm not going to say his name because he, his, he uh, was telling me about he's, uh, some of his co-workers has been watching the YouTube videos online because they come by. He had some of the preaching up and he was listening and uh, he was coming by and just started listening. Now he's listening. Uh, you know, this is everybody that your personal Jerusalem is everybody that God puts in your path. Uh, uh, you know, your testimonies, you know, uh, like for example, um, Sister Devin shared her testimony. I think I checked yesterday. It was over 200 views, 200 views. Uh, you know, and these are people she knows, her family, her loved ones, people that, that may or may not be saved. And, and what's cool is I've read her testimonies as people that, that, that has been saved since she last seen them, and they're touching base, and they're like, yeah, I got saved too. I mean, it's an exciting thing. Um, and, you know, but using your reaching out to your Jerusalem, those people around you. Paul, when you study the book of Acts, uh, when we went through that, I'll tell you, the book of Acts was such a blessing. Paul 
Everywhere he, every, I mean, he was a street witnesser. He was out soul winning, uh, right in people's face, but also just the people that just so happened to run into. I mean, he'd sit in the court and he'd say, you, you know, I, I wish you was like a Christian, or I wish you was a Christian. I mean, he would witness to everybody. I remember uh, before I was saved, my sister's father in law, Brother Gary Norris, priest at our church, he's a pastor. Uh, I remember uh, being at the house. I was lost uh, playing in the band. That was when I had the mullet and everything back, you know, back in the late '80s. And uh, uh, sitting there, and he he come in and uh, sat down, and he just looked at me. He said, "I'm going to ask you a question." I said, "What?" He said, "Are you saved?" I was like, "That's awful personal." <laughs> It's like, I just met you. I didn't know what to say. I was blown away. I was like, "But you know what?" What he was doing. It was his personal Jerusalem. Everybody that God put in his path, he was going to witness to. And, and that's what we ought to be. You know, we ought to be looking for those opportunities, looking for those people that God has, has put in our path. You know, whether you're at the grocery store and, and you get this, just this uh, the urge that God puts on us, give that person a track. Tell that person about Jesus. Whether you're at a family, I'll tell you, I go to family reunions or we go to family cookouts or family picnics, I'm praying for an opportunity. You know why? Because I love to see people get saved. <laughs> I love to see somebody call on Jesus Christ. If that doesn't excite you, then maybe we got to examine your salvation. Because every since I've been saved, there's something that stirs up in me called the Holy Spirit gets all excited when somebody else gets saved and gets the Holy Spirit inside of them. I've always been like that. Uh, when we did the Christmas play, Brother Andrew Tallman was, uh, I can't remember, he was the crook, you know, robbing the, the local store. And at the end, he got saved. And I'm in the back room when he's calling on Christ. It's the Christmas play. And I'm getting choked up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Andrew's that good of an actor. You know, that's all I'm, I'm going to say. But your personal Jerusalem, reaching those immediately around you, that's what you want to do. I uh, th Now, there's some pros and cons of that. The, the, the pros to that is the more you witness to those around you, the more of those you're going to see in heaven. That I mean, I, I mean, that's probably the best reason you could have to tell those around you uh, about Jesus Christ. Because I don't know about you, and I hope you're like this. You want to see your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your cousins, uh, your neighbor, your best friend, your co-worker, those you go to school with. You want to see them in heaven. You want to cross the streets of gold one day when you and get through those pearly gates and see them there. That's the pros. Because the, the more you witness to your Jerusalem, those around you, the better chance you're going to see them on the other side. All right? But there are some cons on the on sticking with your Jerusalem. Eventually, you run out of people. <laughs> I know when I first got saved, I had people all around me to witness to. I've been saved for quite a while, since 1992. I, don't, I did math. I don't know how many years that is. But uh, I've been saved for that long, and you, you kind of run out of a Jerusalem. So you can't just stay in your Jerusalem your entire life. you got to break out of that. So that brings me to number two. Uh, I call it the track and dash. This is uh, actually not, uh, this is going soul winning. This is, okay, I'm going out, uh, and uh, but you're not doing any more than just handing a track, say, can I give you something to read? Thank you very much, and you dash out of there. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it, it's, it's just, basically, you're not getting verbal. You're not talking a whole lot unless they lead it on. Uh, this, is, uh, I, this is basically for the beginner. And, and I, I know I've heard people say, well, Track and dashes, you shouldn't be doing that. But I, I, I'm, I'm for that if you're just starting out. This is the way I started out. Uh, if you're watching tonight, you want to get started, you want to grab a, a friend or a, somebody at church and go out and commit an hour a week or even 30 minutes, just 30 minutes a week. So I'm going to go out, but I'm scared. You don't have to talk. We got tons of tracks in the church if you're just starting out. And just go up and say, can I give you something? Uh, and you never know. It may spark into a conversation. And, and folks, let me tell you something. Even if you've never went so winning, when it sparks into a conversation, man, that's one of the greatest opportunities because even if you're scared, uh, but there's there's an adrenaline kick because now you've just established a relationship. So, but there are pros and cons to uh, to uh, track and dash. Uh, the pros is it's great for beginners and it helps beginners get out on the field for the first time to be able to do it. But the cons is it doesn't challenge people to think. It just doesn't. Um, you know, I've, 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 I always hand people tracks. I, I take tracks everywhere I go. Uh, the reason being is because sometimes people are in a hurry and they just don't have time to talk. 
Or uh, if nothing else, even if they have time to talk and they don't want to talk to me, I got that track in their pocket, and hopefully someday they'll read that. So, so, uh, so. But the problem is just giving the track and saying thank you, have a good day, walk off. It doesn't challenge them to think. It doesn't challenge them on their spiritual condition. Uh, there's been many a times where I've handed a track and they're trying to shut me down, and I just push just a little bit, and the door comes open. So that's the problem with uh, 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 track and dash. All right. Number three, door to door soul winning. Uh, this is exactly what it says, and pretty self explanatory. Basically, going from door to door, knocking on doors, uh, telling people uh, uh, about Christ, you know, soul winning, telling, giving them the gospel, telling them how to get saved, uh, you know, going all the way as far as get, trying to make sure you see that person call on Christ. Um, door to door is good. It has its pros and it has its cons. I'll explain. The pros is you can completely thrash out a neighborhood. This is what I like about door to door. Uh, we do a lot of door to door because you can pick out a neighborhood and say, you know what, I'm gonna, me and my buddy is going to spend, we're gonna work this whole one side tonight. Next week we're gonna meet again. We're gonna work the next side, and you can basically keep a notebook. I know Brother Joe Fisher was very thorough when he when it comes to the areas that he he'd make sure and he'd take little notes on each address going door to door. Uh, you know, yeah, it's great for church uh, when when like 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 if a whole church, which is would be an amazing thing, if a whole church was so winning, that way you're not. Not overlapping one another and you're not knocking on the same door twice so you, door to door you can really keep track of where you're going it's great for soul winning events like when we go during the tent revival and we're, we're, we're thrashing out a neighborhood I can you know you can send people here send people there uh, so so there are some obviously some really good things about door knocking I love door knocking uh, but there are some, some cons to the door knocking uh, the cons is is sometimes you people feel intimidating because you get up in their personal space when you're right up in their door uh, I remember for uh, one year, me and Jay, we were at Soul Winning, and uh, we went to this neighborhood. It was getting kind of late, but I just wanted to finish this last door, but it was starting to get a little dark, and uh, we knocked on the door, and the guy, <laughs> I probably should have quit because it didn't it didn't go very good. The guy was <laughs> about ready to beat me up, and, uh, and uh, Jay goes, Jay told me, he said, man, I'll tell you what, this Soul Winning stuff's hard, <laughs> but uh, you know, getting in their personal space, that, that, that can be uh, one of those things, which by the way, I'm not trying to scare you. That That's like once in the thousand doors where you <laughs> you get somebody get angry normally people just say no thank you but um but another con is uh, a lot of times they don't want you to hold their door open uh I've, I've had that happen quite a bit maybe it's cold outside and uh they don't want the door open uh and the heat get out or it's or it's, or they got the air conditioner on they don't want the cold getting out or they don't want to get the cat get out i can't tell you how many times i've knocked on doors and you're right in the middle of a good soul winning and all of a sudden the cat flies out the door and the homeowner's attention goes off of the soul winning and goes on to the cat so i've had that happen so door knocking has its pros and cons but then number four this is my favorite one this is the, the one i personally in the last few years just absolutely love doing um uh i, I like street witnessing street witnessing is is basically grabbing a handful of tracks grabbing your pocket bible stick it and uh pick out a town that's populated it's got a lot of people and you just go for a walk and you just walk around and you look for people uh, lollygagging on the edge of the street. You know, they're not doing much. Uh, you know, walking around looking for, uh, uh, just to walk up to them and say, hey, can I give you give you something? Give them a track. Say, can I talk to you about heaven? Are you going to heaven? And it's really this, that simple. I love doing that be, uh, uh, because the, the, the pros and the cons. The pros is um, it's easy, easy to find people that are relaxed. They're not in a hurry. They're not busy doing something in their house. Uh, they're not in the middle of cooking dinner. They're not talking on the phone. Uh, I can, you can see what that they're. You can pick people out that are just kind of hanging out on the corner, and those are the ones that are really easy to talk to. Um, I, I, you may not cover as much ground as you will door knocking, but it seems like the ones that you get are more effective. Uh, if if you don't like door knocking, this would be the style for you. Um, it, just grab a couple tracks and just start walking. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, people. I, I remember going down. Uh, we did the last soul winning Sunday. We did uh, went down Northeast Park. It was me, Nancy, and Jody. And uh, and oh boy, there was people all over the park, and they were just hanging around, not doing anything, just you know, chilling, fishing. And uh, I think we led what two people to the Lord, three people, something like that. People, I mean, we we just walked into the Northeast Park down there by the by the water, and just people all over the place. And it was just you know, people are just more relaxed than that. Uh, you don't interrupt what they're doing in their homes. You don't inv invade their personal space. And here's the big perk, all right? You 
get a lot of exercise <laughs> uh, when you're walking because, you know, you may walk a half a mile before you see somebody, you know, if you take a back road or something. Uh, but here's the good news. You burn 100 calories per mile, okay? This is a little incentive. This is a win-win situation, all right? Uh, you, 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 you can walk up to three miles in one hour. If you go so, you can burn 300 calories by going out and uh, and and uh, uh, soul winning in just one hour. If you go two hours, you can burn what's that? That's uh, what 600 calories. 600 calories in two hours of soul winning, and then you can go back and have a Big Mac. A Big Mac's what I wrote it down: 530 calories. You could go soul winning for the Lord, earn rewards in heaven burn 600 calories, go eat up 530 and have 60 to spare to have you one of them chocolate fudge pops when you get home. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean that those are the pros, but there are some cons. The cons is sometimes, and we did this, say we're going to go street witnessing and there's nobody outside. <laughs> you're, you're like, where is it at? It's like, it's like nobody's bill, nobody out. So that you now door to door, you always have somebody. You can root somebody out of their door, uh, but street witnessing, not always. Uh, you, you, uh, you have to do a whole lot more walking. Uh, if you're not into walking, street witnessing may not be your thing. Uh, door to door, you can get in some townhouses and you can just, uh, uh, you can, um, I mean, literally, I, there's some townhouses where you can knock on a door here, you walk over 10 feet, you got another door. So uh, so, so those are the methods of soul winning. Uh, one method I, I don't like, I don't, or two methods that I didn't even mention that are not soul winning that I've seen passed off as soul winning. Uh, one is lifestyle evangelism. Say, you know what, I'm just going to live a good life, and people will see my life and want to get saved. I don't agree with that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Living a good life is right. And yet, living a good life will get you noticed. But I have yet to have anybody come up to me and say, I've been watching your life. Please show me how to get saved. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It takes words, not just lifestyle. You, I think you need both. Um, but uh, and another one is canvassing or inviting people to church. I know uh, some churches don't. I'm not knocking them. I know, uh, I'm, and we've done it too, as well as canvassing. But canvassing, canvassing a neighborhood, going out and saying we'd like to invite you to church. That's not so one. You, you know, uh, uh, going out and getting people to come in so they can hear the preacher talk about the gospel on Sunday is not soul winning. That's giving the preacher an opportunity to soul win. That's all you're doing is the footwork. Going out, if you're going out to soul win, you're going out to tell people how to get saved. Now, don't get me wrong. Inviting the people to church is awesome. I wish every all of us would do it. We all should be doing that. Uh, but, but it's not soul winning. Canvassing and lifestyle evangelism is not soul winning. All right? So let me, uh, let's finish up today real quick. Let me go to the next one. Uh, next slide. Uh, come on. I'll turn my mouse off. Hold on. My eyes are getting old and I can't hardly see. Let me see. Is that one? Is that the one I want? No. Hold on. There we go. I got it. Oh, I should do it over there, but I like standing up. I like being a pulpit. Anyway, uh, five tips. I'm going to give you five tips real quick that will help you with your soul winning. And I'll be quick. I'll just be a couple minutes on each one. I'll go through these real quick. Basic soul winning tips. Number one, self-preparation and field preparation through prayer. Romans 10.1, Paul says this, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. He says, I'm praying for my own people, the Israelites. I want to see them get saved. Um, folks, let me tell you something. One of the most important things you can do before you go soul winning is prepare yourself through prayer and to prepare the ground that you're about ready to go out and thrash out in prayer because you don't know the doors you're not going to knock on. You don't know the family that's going to be at the family reunion. You don't know the, the, the people that's going to be walking up the street. You just don't know. And, and, and But God knows. God knows. Uh, you know, I, I pray. This is what I pray for. I go, I, first off, I make sure God clean me up. If there's anything wrong, get me clean before I go, Lord, I pray and confess anything I might need to confess. Uh, I pray and ask God to empower me. Pray and ask my, my ears is unclogged so I can hear the Holy Spirit as I go out. I, I Then I also pray that not just that I'm prepared, but that, that, that God would lead me in the direction of somebody that may need to be saved, that may be uh, 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 struggling right then. You may be saying, you know what, I've been out so long, I've never seen anybody get saved. Have you asked God to lead you in the direction of somebody? And I, if, I mean, let's, let's just put this together. If God wants people to be saved, 
you want to tell somebody about being saved and there's somebody out there wanting to hear about it, don't you think he'd probably lead you in that way? Yeah, pray. Prepare you and prepare the ground before you go. Number two, learn the art of asking questions. Jesus Christ was a master at asking questions. Learn the art. Uh, qu uh, questions, uh, when you go out soul winning, is better than telling people. It, it, it's better to ask them and let them tell you. A lot of times, if you tell people, well, you're a sinner, but yet you ask the right questions and let them tell you, well, have you ever broken into the commandments? Well, uh, well, I've told a lie. You know what that is? You know, this is questions. Well, that's a sin. You know what that makes you? A sinner. <laughs> you see? The right question. You As you go begin to go soul winning, start thinking of questions to ask. I'll give you a couple that I throw out all the time. Um, I say, uh, I'll walk up to somebody. I'll say, are you saved? You know, there's a question. Uh, are you going to heaven when you die? The diagnostic question. If they tell me, yeah, I, I'll pull my pocket Bible out and I hand it to them. I'll say, can you show me out of the Bible how I can get to heaven. If I was about to die right now, would you be able to do that? And uh, and that's the question I ask them. I can't tell you how many people will look at me and go, uh, 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 no. And I'm like, wait a minute. You just told me you were saved and you can't even tell me how to get saved? I'm like, are you sure you're saved? Well, then all of a sudden, the, see, these questions, I'm asking questions the whole time. And then uh, and they're like, oh, no, I don't know. I'm like, and then I'll ask, yes, well, doesn't that scare you to not know? And I, I mean, because hell's hot. And they always say, well, yeah, I guess it does. You see? Now, if I would have told them that without asking questions, they would not respond near as good as if I let them tell me. Questions provoke them to think. And, and Jesus, when you study the life of Christ through the Gospels, you'll see over and over again how he constantly asks questions. So learn the art of asking questions. The better you are at asking questions, listening to them more than them listening to you, you will become a way better soul winner, way better communicator of the Gospel. People just listen better when you ask questions. Number three, develop a compassionate heart. This is another thing. I mean, I, I could probably have 30 tips on here, but I picked five that I want to share with you um, that helped me as a soul winner. Developing a compassionate heart. Uh, compassion means a concern for the suffering of others. Folks, let me tell you something. When you're standing on a street corner talking to a stranger, this is what I do. I look for something that they have a need of. Even if i got to ask them a question, is there anything I can pray for you about? Um, I'll give you an example. There was a lady down in Oxford. We were down the backside, uh, down behind Whitehall. And uh, and she just looked sad. She walked the street, and I asked her, can you be a track? She said, yeah. And uh, I said, I just asked her, I said, is there anything I can pray for you? And uh, and, and she she just kind of just kind of broke down a little bit. She said, you know, she goes, I've been struggling with my teenager all this week. Uh, she's rebellious. She's not listening to me. And uh, and I said, can I pray with you over that? And, uh, and she, you, you just watched her, her emotions just drain. And she grabbed my hand, I grabbed her hand, and we just sat there in the street, and I lifted her daughter's situation up before the Lord. And I prayed and asked the, the Lord to have her, his, his hand upon her, and I asked him to bless her family. Man, that lady looked up. She had tears coming out of her eyes. Folks, let me tell you something. Jesus was, was the most compassionate person that ever walked the face of this earth. Yeah, he was a soul winner. Yeah, he was serious about uh, holy living. He was serious about getting the church started. But man, he loved people. He genuinely loved people. And that's a Christ-like attribute that when you learn that out on the street, folks, let me tell you something. There is Seeing somebody get saved is a blessing. But seeing somebody break down because they know you love them, and you genuinely care about their situation, enough to pray about them, enough to help them if you can, you will break through the hardest heart with, with love. Uh, you know, learn how to be compassionate. Learn how to be a person that cares about people, and you will become a better soul winner. Soul winner. Uh, number four. How do you become a better soul winner? Number four, commit to going. Commit to going. We commit a time to go to work every week. We commit a time uh, to go to church every week. I hope you do. <laughs> every week. Uh, we commit a time to go to school. We commit a time to go to the dentist. We commit, and when we make that appointment, we, we keep it. If we say, you know what, I think if I get time, I might go to the dentist this week. You probably won't go. <laughs> you know, man, I was going to go to the dentist this week, but you know what? I just didn't feel like it. I just I got so busy and I didn't have time. You know, weeks go by and I say, man, you know, it's been, I haven't had my teeth cleaned in seven years. I think it's time for, you know, you know, but when you make that appointment and you put that appointment up on the refrigerator, you're like, you keep it. Make a, an appointment to say, I'm going to give God 
30 minutes out on the street. 30 minutes of knocking doors this week. I mean, yeah, that's not a lot, but it's. But let me tell you something. That adds up in a year's time a lot more than what the average Baptist is doing in, in, in today. So commit to it. Find a time. Find a time that's good for you. Find a friend, a church person, a, a brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, a mom, a dad, an uncle, somebody that will go with you, go two, go three, and, and say, let's commit. Let's commit to the Lord that we're going to give him 30 minutes a week to go out and tell somebody about Jesus. All right? And then number five, last one, get a burden by lifting up your eyes. What do I mean? I get that from John chapter 4, verse 35. Jesus says, now this is when he's looking out at all the lost people. I love this verse. Here's the soul winner's verse. It says, he says, say, say not ye that there are four months and then cometh the harvest. Behold, he says, listen to this. He's talking to his disciples. I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest. He said, don't say that the field's white. Lift up and look. You can see the white. It's ready now. What he was talking about was souls. He said, they're ready. They're out there. Folks, let me tell you something. The, 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 greatest, the greatest way to build a burden for souls, to get, to, to get a burden, is to start looking at every... I challenge you, next time you go out, <laughs> hopefully soon, the next set of eyes you look at, think, where are they going to spend eternity? Or is that, you know, when you go to the restaurant and the waitress walks up to your table, look her in the eyes and say, is she going to spend eternity in heaven or hell? And I got the gospel and I might make the difference. Uh, think about the fact that she may burn in hell for all eternity. I say, well, preacher, that's kind of rash. Bible talks a lot about that. Matter of fact, Bible talks a lot about that. I, 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 every per you walk down the street, you look every person in the eye and say, my words can make a difference in that person's eternity. Whether they're walking the streets of gold shouting for glory for all eternity, or they're going to be screaming in the flames of hell for all eternity, God's given you the good news. Folks, we got to have a burden. Lift up your eyes and look on the fields. If you're not soul winning, man, I beg you, I challenge you. Uh, don't wait for the church to have programs to go. This is the worst thing. Uh, don't you know? If maybe maybe you're you don't go to our church, you go to another church, and they don't have a soul winning program. Start one. Yeah, you know, or even if you go, even if you don't even, you don't go so winning. Find time. Don't wait for someone to grab your hand and pull you out. Go find a friend. Commit thirty minutes to God and go change somebody's eternity. Change someone's eternal direction from the flames of hell to the streets of gold. And then one day, one day, you get to heaven and you'll hear, well done, that good and faithful servant. And there's an old song called Thank You. And it talks about, uh, I remember me and Nancy, I'll close with this. Me and Nancy was uh, listening to it going down the road. And it's the, the one part, and I can't remember how it's worded. It's about going, getting to heaven. And this uh, guy comes up to you and said, said, you know what, you may not remember me. But when I was in third grade, I was in your Sunday school class, and you, you invited people to pray, and that day I bowed my head and got saved, and he said, I just want to thank you. You know, I, I don't know how biblical that song is, but uh, uh, whether that's actually going to happen or not, I, I, but I'll tell you right now, I would love to get to heaven and say, you know what, I got a chance to lead that person to the Lord. I got a chance to lead. My personal belief, I can't give you a whole lot of scripture on this, but I believe the crowns is the souls that we're going to carry to heaven with us. The only thing you're going to take to heaven is souls. And the only way you're going to do it is through soul winning. Get out there. Tell somebody about Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Bible. Lord, help us to take this soul winning business serious. Help us as a church. Oh, Lord, when this stupid disease goes away, Lord, this, or this virus goes away, Lord, that we'll have a heart, Lord, for souls, Lord, that State Line Baptist Church would, would, would just rock this whole Jerusalem, this whole area with, with your, your gospel. Help us, Lord, to have a burden for souls. Help every member in our church to get a passion and a burning to see people saved. Lord, I know right now we're not together. But Lord, I pray in this until we do, Lord, work on our hearts for that so when we do, when this thing lifts, man, we're ready to get out on the street. Father, I pray for our church, Lord. Pray for those who are suffering, Lord. Pray for those that are working in the hospitals, our nurses and doctors. Pray for pray for uh, just, just our church to keep them safe. And Lord, I lift up another little special prayer request here as we close. I pray for Sister Frances, Lord. I, I haven't talked to her, just got a message. That's all I know, Lord. But I pray in this that she'd be safe. Lord, heal her. Lord, get her out of the hospital as soon as possible. 
And now, Father, as we close, I pray and ask you bless our church family tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, State Line, we're going to close. Uh, uh, I look forward to seeing you Sunday. And uh, until then, good night. If you need something, you know where I'm at. Give me a shout. I love you. I can't wait to see you. God bless. When I